Hi, kindergarten. It's Miss Cliff. Today we're going to read a level B book called Bridges. In our book today, we are going to be asking questions and looking for answers to help make inferences. Good readers ask questions and look for answers as they read. The pictures in a story can also provide information to answer questions. Making inferences helps the reader to draw conclusions the story does not directly state. Inferences are like clues from the story. They help readers figure out something the author hasn't told them in the text. So let's go over some examples of making inferences before we begin. Here's the first example. The girl puts on her pajamas, brushes her teeth, and gets into bed. Can you infer what time of day it is? Pause the video and turn and talk with a parent or sibling to tell them how you infer what time of day it is. Did you infer that it's nighttime? We know that when we put our pajamas on, brush our teeth, and get into bed, that means that we're going to sleep, and we sleep at nighttime. So even though I didn't tell you that it would be nighttime, you inferred by using what you know and making connections to help you understand what time of day it was. Another example would be, the soccer team went out for ice cream after the game to celebrate. What do you infer? Pause the video and turn and talk with a parent or sibling about what you infer because the soccer team went out to get ice cream after the game. Do that now. Did you infer that they won their soccer game? Now, I didn't tell you that they won their soccer game, but I did say they were getting ice cream to celebrate. So when you infer, you're using clues and putting together the pieces to make a connection about what you think happened, even though I didn't directly tell you. Before we read, let's go over some words we need to know. I'll say the word first and you repeat after me. Bridges. Now bridges help you get from one side to another. There might be no land or a body of water in between and you need to get from one side to the other side. A bridge can help you get from one side all the way to the other side. And we'll see some bridges in our book today. The next word is made. Now you may have noticed that I've highlighted the E at the end of the word because today we'll see some words that end with silent E. We know that silent E makes the vowel say its name. So if I'm looking at this word and I get stuck, I can say to myself, silent E helps the vowel say its name. M-A-D. Made. So if you get stuck, make sure that you double check for that silent E. Metal. Rope. You'll notice I've highlighted silent E in this word too. It helps the O say its name. O. R. O. Rope. Stone. There's another silent E, making the O say its name, O, st, O, N, stone. And our last word to know is wood. Let's get into our book. Before we read, let's go ahead and take a look at the picture first. What do you notice? I notice that there's a big body of water between two pieces of land, and I see a bridge connecting them from one to the other side. So let's go ahead and read to find out some information. Some bridges are big. 
Now it's your turn to touch the stars and read it back to me. Go. Now here the author did tell me that some bridges are big, right? I didn't need to infer that. I could look at the picture and know that that bridge is a big bridge. It's also a big lake, isn't it? Some bridges are small. Your turn to read. Great work. Looking at the picture, I can tell that this bridge looks a lot different from the bridge from the last page, isn't it? Some bridges are old. Your turn to read. Nice job, reader. Some bridges are new. Your turn to read. How does this bridge look different from the old bridge? Pause the video and turn and talk with a parent or sibling to tell how they're different. Do that now. This bridge looks new because it has a very fancy design. It's also built out of different materials than the last bridge. If I look at the last bridge, I see that this bridge looks old. It looks like it's been there for a long time and it's built out of stone. Let's keep reading to see what other kinds of bridges we find. Some bridges are made from wood. Your turn to read. Where does wood come from? Wood comes from trees, that's right. So it's different from the stone bridge that we saw that was old, isn't it? Let's keep reading. Some bridges are made from stone. Your turn to read. Does this bridge remind you of another bridge that we read about in our book? It reminds me of the old bridge because it was also made out of stone. Stone is another word for rock. And rocks come out of the ground. They are a very hard material and are very good and sturdy for building a bridge. Some bridges are made from Metal. Your turn. Look at this bridge. What is it carrying? It's carrying a train. That looks different from some of the other bridges. If we look at this bridge, it looks like this bridge is made for people. That's right. This bridge looks like it's made for maybe bicycles riding through it. It doesn't look like it's big enough for a car. What about this bridge? What do you think that bridge is made for? Probably cars to go over, right? What about this bridge? It looks like this bridge is made for people to walk over. It doesn't look big enough for a car either. Let's keep reading to find out about different kinds of bridges. Some 
bridges are made from rope. Your turn. Now, would you want to walk on a rope bridge or would you want to walk on a wood or stone bridge? Pause the video and turn and talk with a parent or sibling about which bridge you would want to cross. Do that now. When thinking about if I would want to walk on a rope bridge, I'm going to stop and make some inferences. Now, the author didn't tell me if the rope bridge is stronger than a stone bridge, but I can make some inferences that the rope bridge is not as strong and sturdy as a stone bridge. I think I might feel safer going over a stone or a metal bridge because I think that they are going to be stronger and keep me safe more than this flimsy looking rope bridge. What did you decide? For your activity today, you're gonna to do some writing and art together. You're going to design your own bridge to go across a body of water. Now, it doesn't have to be a real body of water. You can just pretend. You are going to draw it and write about the details of your bridge. So you can include as many details as you want, but I would like at least one complete sentence. Now I have included another video for you to watch all about bridges and building bridges. This is going to be a fun hands-on activity for you to do using blocks and paper and materials that you have at home so you can build your own bridge and not just draw it. After you build your bridge, then you're going to draw it onto paper and then you'll write your sentence. This is what you are going to submit into Google Classroom as your assignment. You also have one more assignment that you're going to submit into Google Classroom all about making inferences, which is what we talked about at the beginning of our book. On this activity sheet, you are going to practice making inferences about different kinds of bridges. So you are going to look at the picture and infer what that bridge looks like it is meant for. I did some practice with this while we were reading our book. I thought about what bridge might be used for walking, what bridge might be used for a car, what bridge might be used for a bicycle or for walking. So you're gonna do the exact same thing. Now the text doesn't give us the answers. The author didn't tell us which bridges are meant for what. We are going to use what we know to make inferences. We're going to use clues from the picture and we're going to think about what we already know. If you're not sure, ask yourself some questions like, is this big enough for a car? Or is it small? Does it look very strong and sturdy? Could it hold something heavy? Good readers stop and ask themselves questions so they can make inferences. So this is what you are going to do after your writing activity, and you are going to submit this in Google Classroom. Now, don't forget to go back and reread because that's what good readers do. And have fun with this activity. The other video that you are going to watch about building bridges is going to be linked below as well as in the lesson plan. Have fun with this activity. Take some pictures and send it to us on Class Dojo. And I will see you later, friends. Bye.